brutalism, derived from the French term béton brut, which translates to raw concrete in English. A couple years ago, just shortly after finishing high school, my appreciation for architecture rose tremendously. I've always been incredibly infatuated and invested in all the forms of art, but architecture was never very high on my radar of interest. But after familiarizing myself with all the different styles of architecture and falling in love with those such as Gothic, Art Deco, Contemporary, Tudor, Modern, one stood out. One towered above them all. Brutalism. And no, not just because the name is cool, but because brutalism almost encompassed something I saw within myself. I mean, that's what we do, right? As humans, we find ourselves within things. Or either that or I'm just a massive narcissist, who knows? Anyways, the brutalist style of architecture gave me a feeling that none of the other styles gave me. It's raw. It's not hiding behind anything. Not pretty paint or fancy window panels. It's simple. It's fortress-like. It's uninviting. It looks cold. It doesn't tell you everything about itself at face value. It's simple yet enigmatic, as you can only imagine what takes place within those walls. It's punctual. It's strong. There's an emphasis on geometry. It's purposeful, precise. It tells you so much about itself whilst also telling you nothing at all. I fell in love. Brutal, yet beautiful. These monolithic structures always stand out, without even trying. As you stare at the city and get lost in the mix of the glamour and the flash, these solid blocks of concrete will never fail to make themselves apparent. They're not just lost in the mix like the rest. You almost can't help but to gaze at it. Meanwhile, it stands as if it doesn't even acknowledge your existence. It doesn't care that you're there. It doesn't need your validation to be beautiful, like a flashy, colorful home whose beauty only resides within the amount of eyes and cameras that come out to snap cute pictures of it for Instagram. It is a self-validating body of art. It doesn't go out its way to seek everybody's approval. You don't need to like it, and it makes no difference whether you do or not. I recently came across this, I guess you could call it brutalist style cabin in the woods, and man y'all gotta see this shit. The neckbeards on Reddit were flailing their flabby arms about this one, arguing about whether it meets the criteria to be labeled as brutalist or not, on the practicality of it, the fact that it lacks warmth and whoever likes it must be a nihilist or some shit, you know, typical neckbeard redditor shit. But all the reasons they seem to hate it are the reasons that I love it. To me, it embodies isolation and solitude so well. And I understand those words have very negative connotations to most people, but as somebody who's not very social and loves feeling isolated and actually enjoys the cold, this is like a dream house to me. The inside is almost like a cave. It's simple, it's secluded. It isn't begging to be seen by any passerbys because there probably are no passerbys. You feel alone and that's a good thing. Well. To those who enjoy being alone at least. This isn't the perfect home for everybody. Brutalism isn't everybody's taste and that's okay. It's polarizing. It really seems to be a hit or miss with people. Some people think brutalist architecture only serves as an ugly eyesore and architectural embodiment of poverty in wartime, and some see it as an ideal place to reside or at least something to marvel at and appreciate. I'm not so hooked up on its past or how it came to be, and I feel it's important to see many things this way. It's always crucial to acknowledge something's past and history because that's the path it took to arrive wherever it's at now. But to see the past of something as shackles and place a box around it based on that is wrong in my opinion. Our pasts aren't shackles, they're simply what led to the road ahead. It seems as if the origin of brutalism is discussed more than the art itself. And I always hate to see people be so caught up in something's past, let it move on and reinvent itself. It can't flourish into something new if nobody will let it. But luckily, there are also many people who have let it transform into something new. It's making a bit of a resurgence. Movies such as A Clockwork Orange and more recently Blade Runner 2049 alongside many others have depicted brutalist architecture within their films. Brutalism in film and other forms of art such as graphic novels is usually used to portray a dystopian or utopian future, but usually dystopian. 
This obviously doesn't help the way people view this conversational style of architecture because so many people already associate it as being symbolic of hard times, weaponry, wartime and oppression, etc. Just from its display through pop culture alone. But hey, I still think it looks really cool. Now look, I'm not implying that we need cities entirely consisted of brutalist style buildings or anything. I'm just sharing my view on it and why I like it. Would I want to live in a brutalist style apartment complex? No, but brutalist style homes are a different story. And would I want to live in one of those? Yes. I'm going to display some brutalist style homes with you and talk a little about why I like them so much. First of all, the versatility of them is unmatched. You can insert these homes in a desert, a snowy mountainside, a city, the tropics, you name it. It'll look nice. Since the material is so raw and has such an unfinished look, it never really violates the feng shui of the area around it. It stands out yet blends in so well, and it's such a fascinating effect. Secondly, the simplicity. We're dealing with very simple geometry here, nothing too stylistic and elaborate, just very simple shapes that are doing their job well. It's also so simple that it doesn't really lock itself within any specific period of time. You could park an old school car out front and it'll look nice, or you could park a goddamn Tesla truck or some shit out there and it'd still look nice. And I really like that about it. It's timeless. I'd name off the architects, but I would rather not butcher all of their names as a lot of them are foreign and I just can't pronounce that shit. But props to all the architects and people behind the designs, working to move brutalism forward and keep it alive. It's definitely gotta be quite risky, knowing its reputation and all, but my respect goes out to them for still going at it. Artists like these are what make art so special to me. They stick their necks out, they risk, they don't shy away from controversy or the possibility of failure or disapproval. They create no matter the opinions of those around them. They just create. It's special. It's always special when you encounter one who doesn't just follow the herd, which the brutalist style also kind of encompasses to me. It exists in its own element and self-validates. Meanwhile, those around it are petitioning for it to be torn down and replaced with something more uniform, but it just stays true to itself no matter what. Maybe it's all in my head and I'm seeing things that aren't really there and just looking too deep in the shit. But hey, that's just kind of what I tend to do. Who knows? Either way, I just really like it. Comment your thoughts about it below. I'm curious to read what y'all think. Like and sub if you enjoyed. And if you like really cool art, follow me on Instagram. It's in the description of this video. And I'll put it in the comment section too. But yeah, I post tons of art that I think looks cool or just, I don't know. I think other people may find cool as well. A lot of interior design, architecture, and just all types of art. So if you guys enjoy that type of stuff, then give me a follow on Instagram. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Peace.